Okay. Okay, I'm here with four dogs. We have Lilo, Lou Dog. I'm gonna need help with the other two. Willow and Nala. Willow and Nala. Uh, for New Orleans. Nala. What? New Orleans is N O L A, so a lot of people say Nala, meaning New Orleans. No. No. Uh, it's something else. Okay. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can release dogs from a kennel. Um, in a calm way. We have four Frenchies basically and they're very high energy, very excited and there have been a couple, we were have basically a blended dog family. Two, the two brown uh, and the silver and blue dog, uh, uh, Frenchies are from a different family. They uh, have now joined this one. Uh, sometimes some fights break out between the We'll say the Caucasians and the darker colored ones. Um, it's not a racial thing though. Um, but basically, all these things happen when the dogs are overexcited. So when you have ex activities the dog is really excited about, what you want to do is recreate the activity when you have time to focus on it. And what you want to do is grant access or privileges when the dogs are calm and stop the process or revoke privileges when they are excited. Most of us confuse excited for happy when it comes to dogs, but excited is an unbalanced state of mind just like any other. And the reason we do this is because when dogs are ex uh, overexcited or they're stressed, <laughs> their mouth is open and they look like what we perceive as a smile. So if you look at a dog and it looks to you like it's smiling, it's probably out of breath, stressed out, or uh, excited. And neither one of those are not necessarily calm and balanced. Calm and balanced is what we want the dog to achieve. So you're gonna notice they probably bark a little bit. I'm only gonna start the process for dogs that are calm. And as soon as they get excited, I'm gonna stop. And the precision of my starting and stopping is everything. So I'm gonna pay based on performance. And payment, I mean, is allowing the dog out. Whoever's calmest is gonna be the dog that's gonna get out first. But once I even open the door, they're gonna to have to wait. This is gonna probably be a little bit of a longer video, but you'll get the concept. All right, let's go meet the Frenchies. Are they normally barking? Yeah, they're way. Okay, so this is, go ahead and grab a seat over there. This is way chill. All right, so this is gonna be a little bit different. You can grab a seat here. All right, so normally they would be barking and quite a bit more excited. Uh, so it's a little, bit, a little bit easier, but I'll use, so is Lilo one of the most excited out of the bunch? Yeah. So right now, because they're all excited, I can pick whoever I want. So I would pick whoever is oldest to start off with. But if the oldest dog is behaving the, uh, not as well, then I go to the dog that is offering the behavior that I want. So we'll start with Lilo here. So I come over here and I reach down and Lilo got up. Now that's not super excited, but there was a little bit of arousal. So I pull back. Normally I'm guessing the dog is gonna bounce up and bark and whimper and, and all that. So when it does that, what I do is I step away from him, I pull my hand back and I turn away. I'm not saying no, I'm saying through my actions that that behavior stopped me from letting you out. And then I was super crazy and uh, and Lou Dog here was more calm than I would turn. And I started doing with Lou, and then he got excited, so I stopped. So I reach, the dog gets excited, I pull back. Now that wasn't that excitement. I'm normally, I'm trying to simulate what you normally would get. So you might only reach this far before the dog gets excited. Pull your arm back, and if it's really excited, turn sideways to it. When it calms down, reach again. So at first you might reach this far, then this far, then this far, then this far. Eventually you can touch it. And I make it as noisy as I possibly can. Wow, your door, you are such a well-behaved dog, you didn't realize the door was open the whole time. <laughs> um, so basically, I want to make it as noisy as possible, so, and then as soon as the dog gets excited, it's causing me to stop. The whole point of this process is to have a lot of start and stops right away, very quickly, in concert with what the dog is doing. So if the dog goes longer than three seconds, you don't, you don't start or stop, they're not going to know what it is. Hang in there, Luke. All right, so now what I want to do is I'm going to open the door. I'm just going to do it just with uh, uh, Lilo here, but you can use the principle for all the dogs. So I want the dog to understand just because the door opens doesn't mean I have permission to go out. I need to wait to be called out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the door, but I'm going to use my legs to prevent the dog from escaping. Hopefully, we'll see. I have big clown feet. We'll see if I can achieve it. So again, if you go this back and forth, by the time you go to actually opening it, you've achieved a much calmer energy. The dog's crazy you try to open it, it's just gonna explode out. Mm -hmm. So this is the energy about what you should be seeing, maybe a little snorling, chortling. I'm waiting for the dog to stop follow trying my hand. There you go. So I open it, but I'm ready to block. Yes, I am fast. <laughs> so I'm turning my feet sideways. I don't know if you can see my feet in the shot. Uh, to prevent the dog from it. In order for him to get out, her to get out, excuse me, she has to SIT. Normally I would actually wait for the dog to LAY. Um, sitting is more subordinate, laying down is even more uh, 
I'm challenging you less, is what a sit tells me. Laying down is, I understand I can't come out. So he, she's still challenging because she's right up here in the front. I would like, as soon as she sits, I'm gonna take a small step backwards. That's gonna probably cause her to get up, I'm gonna rush towards her. It's a very similar principle I showed you over there. Now it's, we're waiting for the dog. Now the dog is ready, you see a little lick lipping? That's gonna be a sign of stress and anxiety. Uh, there's a book, good book called uh, Calming Signals that an author named Taurus Regal, uh, Regalis, I believe, is how you pronounce it, wrote. And it shows how dogs can actually calm other dogs down by offering certain behaviors like yawning and turning the head to the side. Yeah. So I was waiting for an SAT, and as soon as the dog SATs, then I'm going to take a step back. So that's the communication. Now, I don't necessarily have to achieve an SAT. I usually like to do that because it's very clear. But the dog's not challenging me. I could take a step back. It will depend. We'll, we'll see how long the dog goes. I don't want this to be a 45-minute video of me standing here because I'm going to run out of stuff to stay. Uh, now, if this is going on and it's too hard for the with all the other dogs together, you might have the other dogs out on a walk where you just do this with one dog. It's an easier version of this activity. And we want to make the activity as easy as we ha can need to so the dog can do all the steps that we want individually, then do all the steps in the easiest version all together, then gradually we start raising the criteria that until we get back to a real world situation. But if I say shush or stop or any of that stuff, that's validating to, uh, to Lou here. So I'm not gonna say any of those things. So I'm not sitting, so I'm gonna go ahead and start stepping away and you're gonna see what's gonna look like a waltz. I'm gonna step away, the dog's gonna try to come out, I'm gonna run, rush back. I'm gonna go back and forth and eventually the dog should stay in the kennel with me standing away with the door wide open. We'll see how we can do it. So wait for the dog to move, stop moving around. Don't ever move away when the dog's moving around because that's a way of saying I wanna come out and I'm moving away saying yes you can. So again, you gotta catch them before they actually do it. I saw that was what the dog wanted to do, so I moved back, moved forward. You get it two steps at a time, stop between each other. You're gonna hit you on the SIT, I think. So I'm gonna describe what I normally would do. He, she's doing a great job, so I could release her now because this is the energy I'm looking for. All we want to do is release them with calm energy, not crazy energy. So what I normally would do is I'd be right up here and I'd wait for the dog to sit down. The instant the dog sat without a prompt, I would take a step backwards right away. The dog would cause the dog to get up. If a kid got up, I would get ready to take a step. If it took a step, I would mirror it. So it takes one step, I take one step. It takes two, I take two, but you can't let it escape. You can stick the head out a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, Preferably not, but it's okay. So I pause. If the dog stays stationary, I take another step backwards. And I'm usually going to wait at about this distance for the dog now to, and this, normally the dog would be sitting. I'm going to wait for the dog to L-A-Y. When the dog L-A-Y is this way of saying, I'm done challenging you, then I would let the dog out. So I'm telling the dog, just because you want to come outside and because the door's open doesn't mean you can, these dogs really need to practice self-restraint and self-control and respect for their humans as authority figures. This is a wonderful activity because the kennel negates a lot of their active, uh, athletic ability. Although, if you saw the guardians here, they are more athletic. Oops! Mm -hmm. They are more than a, equal to the task in terms of athletic capabilities. And the dog's kind of looking at, you know, can you tell this guy in all black to get out of here? Johnny Cash, leave. I get to leave when the door is open. So the dog is nice and calm, so now I can invite Milo out. So the idea is, if I come home and they're all going crazy and I let them all out, bang, 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 this is where a fight's gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah. And now that I'm definitely not gonna reward. We talked about this off camera. Petting this dog, this behavior would be rewarding this behavior. So um, what I'd like you to do is get in the habit of doing this with all your dogs. After a while, you'll be able to come and open all four doors. Well, three, there's two of them that share a kennel. And then walk and sit down. I have one dog, I used to do this. I would come home, open her kennel, go in her bedroom, strip naked, go take a shower, get done with the shower, go make dinner, Doors open. She's, I'm not even in the room. I'm at the next level of the house. And I say, release, which is her word, then she would come out. But she came out nice and calm. All right, Lilo. This is Lilo. Sit. And these are some tips and tricks you can use to help your dog develop self-control by using a like, little kennel release exercise. Right? <laughs>